It is now 5.30 in the morning and uh, on October 21st. And I say this in the last segment, which was just a few minutes ago, that what happens when you're doing a lot of heavy studying and uh, there is no proper time to sleep, and this has been going on since Thursday, uh, there is no night and day. day. Night and day begins to disappear. And the breaks in between are not specifically there simply to sleep. In other words, uh, even when you go to sleep, your mind is, is working on the problems, the studying that you did while you were awake. And basically your work follows you into your sleep. And this is the case where I keep my sleep, sleep journal. Uh, and I write down what I dream. When what I found out about my dreams are, are, is that... Uh, Every day, there are a variety of different types of stresses, and, and this is why I say a variety of types of stresses because not all stress is the same in terms of its how it's defined and how it initially and necessarily affects you. Some stress is hidden because it's you're you're not the type of person who becomes overly stressed in, in an overt manner. In other words, you're not a nervous type of person typically. Uh, and a lot of the stress, which comes in the form of adrenaline, comes in the form of excitement, uh, uh, in addition to coming in form of uh, frustration and uh, nervousness, uh, if your excitement is in the, in the form of excitement and interest, anticipation, and this is often when you're doing research, this is the case where you find a lot of good resources and a lot of good information that leads you from one system to one bit of information to the next bit of information, from one library to the next library. Uh, you can never finish this puzzle, this, putting these pieces together in one particular day. You have to do it over a variety of days. And even though you, you've gone to bed, you've sort of taken some time off, to sort of, because your body is physically exhausted. Uh, it doesn't mean that your mind has stopped trying to put the puzzle together, that your mind has stopped trying to piece these things together. And what often comes up in your dream, this is what I've noticed in my dreams, the common element throughout my, my journals, throughout the, uh, the uh, notes in my journal, is that the dreams are centered on and based on the emotions that I have during this particular day. It's not necessarily a, a resolution of intellectual or academic thought. In other words, it's not, it's not a resolution of uh, logic, but rather a resolution and a interaction with emotion that occurs within the dream. So basically the dream is very emotional, um, emotionally centered, whereas maybe your wake state is not as emotionally centered. So what happens, a lot of your stress, your anxiety, whatever it comes from, it actually plays out a lot inside of your dreams and this can actually affect your, your sleep. Uh, in some cases, and this is my case, uh, instead of waking up with the body feeling like it's many, in many ways that it's rested, uh, I wake up in a sweat, it doesn't matter how cold it is outside, I wake up in a sweat as if, as if I've been exercising all night long. So it's, it's not necessarily what we call the most restful sleep, but it does what, it's need, what, it, what it needs to do, and that is to give the body enough rest so that you can get into the next period of wakefulness and somewhat work your way through the, uh, the uh, mountain of material that you have to process uh, to bring into your library. And that's what it is. There's a mountain of information. There's a mountain of stuff that has to be brought into the library, that connects to the library, to be organized into the library. Uh, for the research, and it's a matter of going through the bits and pieces uh, during this wakeful period, and then going to bed at night and figuring out what 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 pieces connect to what pieces, and how they connect. Because not only is it, it not is not only is it important that they connect, but you also have to know how they connect. So. And that, that, that's actually an important bit that uh, a lot of people don't necessarily get. Uh, that how, you, how it connects 
the how of the connection is, is equally as important as the connection itself. Uh, and that is a very tricky thing to sort of uh, get the handle on. Uh, and this, but the thing is, if you look at this in many ways, if you look at these role-playing games that a lot of geeks play, uh, if you look at these uh, games now, these simulator games on, on the internet where you go into this world and you create a character, and you live your life as this character, well, well, this is exactly the same thing. This is kind of like playing a game. Every time you reach a new level or a new skill, you level up. So. If you look at it from a point of view of a video game, and this is what the research desk is designed to do, this is what I've done now. I've redesigned the desktop so that my uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I've redesigned my research desk so that it becomes more like a video game, and I have access to a large chunk of information uh, throughout the research. In other words, it's not just blank information coming in that they don't control, like you have on TV, cable TV. You turn the you turn on, you turn the TV on, and the information just pours, and there's no real control over it. Uh, and that the information you get is limited. There's a limited amount of information that comes in, and you don't have the variety and the option to parcel out your information that comes in from cable into a particular library. Uh, with uh, IPTV, that's not true because you can connect your IPTV network and you can direct documentaries and different bits and pieces that you can find on the internet uh, onto your uh, network. And so if you have multiple systems here, and I have multiple systems, with the Android systems here on my research desk, I have, I now have four working systems, four working computers. Uh, and this allows me to spread out the research and the different types of research I do, uh, and to, so that I can piece together uh, a multitude of different pieces. In other words, instead of having everything on one system, I can have one piece of research being done here, another piece of research being done here, another piece of research being done here, and another piece of research up on top on the IPTV. So I can have four streams of research, four pieces of the puzzle, of the research puzzle being put together simultaneously. So it's no longer a single stream thing, it's a multiple stream thing. And anyways, the time is up, so I'm going to get back to you in a few hours. Uh, I'm going out today, and you'll be able to see what I do for the rest of the day today. Anyways, talk to you later. Yeah, it is... Uh, it is... <laughs> it is uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on October 21st. That's right. Yeah, it's five hours. It's about five hours since we last uh, since the last segment, uh, which was the beginning of the beginning of the day, the beginning and the end of the day. So uh, the end of last vlog was at five five, just about five five o'clock in the morning. Five thirty was the beginning of the new the new vlog, the new BTS vlog, and now this is the second segment in that in the series for this uh, for today. Uh, and fatigue is if you if you watch me slur my words and sometimes skip over things, that's the fatigue. That's that's the long hours at the research desk. That's you know uh, the hours of going through bits and pieces of material, looking for fi looking for fine detail that uh, in many cases uh, maybe other people have missed or not have noticed, and you know trying to notice connections between things. And. Uh, as I continue with uh, my thought from uh, the last segment, uh, because the time ran out, it is in many ways, if uh, for people who know gaming and know these these uh, role-playing games, the, and these role-playing games have extended themselves to uh, games online like uh, Yoville, uh, Farmville, uh, Sims, and there's a whole host of other games online that you can play, and now even PlayStation and, and most a lot of the other gamers now online who do online gaming all put themselves into these roles, into these situations uh, where they can simulate and pretend to be these different things. Uh, now, if you're a role player, then you might be interested to know or, 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 or thinking of considering, and I did this a while ago because role playing has is, is been around for a long time, but even before you had the internet, you had these uh, game rooms and these sort of role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, the, the, the number of games that you could role play at were, were significant, so they, regardless of whether the internet was there or not. 
And it was my sort of uh, understanding of the, of these things and my view of these things, because I of, of these games that I had uh, earlier earlier on when Yeovil was around in terms of being very popular, I was able to easily beat the games. So the the the, 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 the idea came to me that it might be rather interesting to see whether or not you could turn real life into a game, like whether you could play. Uh, at your life, like with a game, could you set up uh, a system where you could go on and do different things uh, in the internet, uh, just as if you were playing playing a game? And how would you set up the levels? How would you know when you leveled up? How would you know? These are the different things that you would sort of uh, use as your gauge to determine whether or not you're succeeding at the game or not. And so I decided that, that every time I, I, I developed a new skill, that would be a level up. And that every time I solved a problem that sort of held me back in the game, uh, that would also be a level up or, or, or a way forward. And so this is what's been going on for a while now. I've been sort of looking at the, 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 this, this gaming aspect of everything. And so it, it, it makes it rather interesting to think that uh, uh, you can actually... Uh, Using these hidden libraries, using these different archives, and, and looking for clues to see where these different things may be and what might be in them, uh, that you can actually turn uh, your your existence here while you're studying and doing your homework into a into a video into a video game, a real life video game, so that that you can actually go out and. If you wanted to do music, instead of doing music in a video game, you could do music online on YouTube, and you can create your own music company. You can create your own real uh, music studio. You could do the same thing for videos. You could do the same thing for animation. You could do the same thing for dancing. There's, there are dam dancing competitions on the internet that you can get involved in. In other words, uh, as, I, as I decided to go forward and start living my life on the internet as Cyborg Alpha, I asked myself, is there a community out there? Is there enough material out there to really sort of go and say, can you live your life on the internet as Cyborg Alpha? And the answer, surprisingly enough, was yes, and still is yes. And this is sort of as what you'll see as Cyborg Alpha evolves, as it, as it develops, uh, uh, that there will be more involvement, more, uh, more of a community type involvement, more of a life for Cyborg Alpha on the internet. And this is sort of how I'm sort of arranging things here, that uh, this will be part of the research, part of the growth, to see uh, what can be done, how far it can be pushed, and what the limit, you know, what the real limitations are. And of course, this will at some, or at some point in time involve robotics, remote sensing, and other different features that um, uh, would enhance the virtual presence, the web presence that you would have. Uh, with Cyborg Alpha. Right now, I'm adding a, a working on a uh, mobile uh, mobile platform for Cyborg Alpha that can come around with me. Uh, this is in the process of being configured. Uh, it had had its first weekend out over the weekend, you know, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it performed its first task, and now the goal is to get it to do more. And that's how I can sort of determine myself, determine whether or not uh, uh, things are moving forward, whether I'm leveling up, and you know where things need to go next. So it's going to have a second a Cyborg Alpha, it's gonna, a Cyborg Alpha Mu, the mobile platform is going to have its second day out today. We are going to go out. Uh, I'm going to go make some candles at, at the uh, church. I will take you around and show you what's there. And you can sort of see for yourself, you know, how things uh, work out, you know, and the different aspects that, that different things that go on in my life. And then when I come back, I'll tell you about some of the things that are coming up that I'm also working on. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. Uh, I will see you when I get back from uh, candle making uh, in, a, in a couple of hours. It'll probably be back around 5, 6. All right, take it easy. Here we are again. It's uh, 6.30 in the morning on October 22nd and we're ending the day today and in a few minutes we'll start it again so uh, 
this is going to be the end of the video, end of one day, and in a few minutes I'll do another segment and then it will be the beginning of the day. Or the beginning of the next uh, BTS vlog. Uh, what happened today? I was supposed to vlog uh, while I was doing candle making today. But what ended up happening, uh, the camera I bought, the, uh, HD, the HD camera that I bought, uh, the so-called so so action camera, uh, really didn't do a good job. So I'm returning it and getting another camera for just about the same price as an Nikon that will do uh, uh, the filming, the HD filming that I want to do. So uh, swapping one out for the other is not a bad thing. And uh, But there's no video to show you because... Uh, uh, the, the video just didn't come out right, so <laughs> that's kind of the way things went. Uh, I had a good uh, lunch there. They they always it's uh they always have a lunch, and uh, my job is to break up the wax. The, the wax comes in these big uh, chunks uh, from uh, from um, a beeswax supplier. We get it raw from the uh, right from the hives. Uh, and so they come in these huge chunks, and these chunks have to be broken up. So uh, the goal here is uh, my job is to sort of break up that wax and uh, make sure there's enough wax to sort of keep up with the process. But that's kind of that's kind of what I did during the day. Uh, I then came back and uh, did some reading, uh, got some rest, and started working again. Uh, just around, I think it was uh, 12 o'clock, just around midnight, I started working again. And uh, I tested some stuff, more stuff out on IPTV. I tried to watch some channels on uh, the, uh, on, that are offered in Canada, that are online. And I wasn't too impressed with it. Uh, some of them seemed okay, but other stuff was just, you know, wasn't as good as they could be. Uh, I'll give an example. Some of the shows, uh, you could tell the difference when the show is uh, they're, they're sending it out in a very compressed format, as you see a lot of the pixelation in there. In other words, text has jagged lines and is not a smooth uh, one-tone line, as if it were as if it were a drawing. And the thing is, you know, as the signal coming in that is uh, that is degraded, uh, n not that the, that the signal degrades uh, along with the path. But what happens is rather than pulling, putting out a proper high quality signal, they degrade the signal uh, because they can't put the, the, the internet signal, the internet bandwidth is not sufficient to handle the full uh, high quality video so they put out a significantly reduced signal or quality. <coughs> and I do, the, I, I sort of gauge the uh, the quality levels because I do have videos here on my network that I watch and you can see the qualities from the, let's say old shows to the old shows on, on the network to the old shows that I have on here and if you play them side by side you see the uh, quality difference so um, that's why I did that I realized that there really isn't the the quality there for IPTV on the standard levels really isn't there, and there's going to be an old, the IPTV TV for the average person is not going to be with the standard or the with the major things. And they're doing this for a particular reason. They're trying to keep people on the cable packages. They're trying to keep them on their services. So their IPT offerings are going to be significantly downgraded from what. Uh, customers are used to. So it's only when a customer wants to go off a, a particular cable package and have a custom system that a person really would want to move on to IPTV. And uh, and this, I think this is sort of where you're going to have, you'll see your market differences where you want IPTV and those who want standard TV. Um, beyond that, this is now my, uh, my day is starting again. Uh, I, as I said, it's doing the end video and I'm starting the next day. And uh, we'll see what happens. I just did some organizational work today. Uh, you know, just more organizing, getting things organized, and you know, reorganizing my notes and 
working on the electronics bench, uh, different things like that. So that's it for now. Uh, I'll be back in a few minutes with the <laughs> with the opening set with an opening segment for the uh, next BTS BTS, uh, BTS video B BTS vlogs. Ugh. Tired. <laughs>